If there are high frequency signals on your circuit board, then you need to carefully consider how they're routed. For convenience, RF nets can be added to a net class and design rules can be applied to the entire net class. The first thing to notice is that high frequency signals travel along transmission lines. The width of the conductors in transmission lines must be calculated to reach a target impedance of 50 ohms, and the width depends on the structure of the layer stack and the material properties in the PCB stackup. In this example, we're using the layer stack manager to create a new impedance profile with a 50 ohm target impedance on the top layer for a given prepreg thickness. The track width required to reach a 50 ohm transmission line impedance will be automatically calculated with plane int1 taken as the internal reference. After saving the layer stack, this impedance profile can be set in the width rule for the RF net class. Now, when routing, we will have the desired track width. If the width of the track while interactively routing is different, press tab and select a preferred value from the drop-down list. As we can see, the calculated conductor width is much smaller than the pad width for this component, which creates a sharp change in impedance and the possibility of signal distortion along the propagation path. To solve this problem, it is necessary to make the width of the 50 ohm transmission line comparable to the dimensions of the pad included in the RF path. This can be done, for example, by changing the layer structure of the PCB. First, let's increase the thickness of the dielectric to the reference layer by adding an additional prepreg. In this case, you need to check that the overall thickness of the board matches your target and, if necessary, reduce the thickness of the core. After changing the layer stack, the dimensions of the transmission line impedance profile will be automatically recalculated. As you can see, the track width has increased. Let's save the stack and update the impedance profile in the design rules. We'll also change the minimum track width so that we can route into tight spots. Now, the width of the conductor is proportional to the pads, and there will be no jump in impedance. Another point worth paying attention to is the connection between transmission lines and components, for example, microcircuits. Oftentimes, the track width is larger than the pad on an IC. It is recommended to reduce the transmission line width in steps, fixing the conductor segment close to the pad, and choosing a smaller width. In the future, we can smooth out such transitions. But first, let's remove the solder mask from the transmission line. This is used to reduce dielectric-induced losses in the solder mask material at high frequencies. First, select the conductors and set a desired solder mask opening value. It is worth noting that, when we calculated the impedance profile, the losses in the solder mask were excluded from the conductor width calculation. Now, we can smooth out the connection to our component pad. First, we select the step segments and run the teardrops tool. Check the selected only checkbox, then select the teardrop style, and finally check the checkbox for track primitives. We can adjust the smoothing distance as needed. Region type smoothing primitives will be applied to conductors with a smaller mask opening. It is recommended to make conductors for high frequency transmission lines straight and without unnecessary bends, but this is not always possible. To bend the conductor, it is recommended to round off the corners. Moreover, the turning radius must be at least three conductor widths. Therefore, if necessary, increase the turning radius. Another method for routing 90 degree bends is to place a chamfer region. To do this, you can create two tracks at 90 degrees. Select them and use the Tools Convert menu option to create a chamfer region from them. Next, you need to set the percentage of the corner chamfer. The optimal angle depends on the thickness of the dielectric and the conductor width both of which can be calculated using the formula from DeVille and James, which was proposed after a series of practical experiments. Click OK, and the tracks are converted to a chamfered region. In the Properties panel, we can also specify the size of the solder mask opening. When routing high-frequency signals, the use of vias is highly undesirable due to the influence of parasitic capacitance and inductance on the propagating signal. Also, be sure to keep multiple high-frequency signals spaced apart so that they do not run parallel to each other at close range and create the potential for crosstalk. The solution to this problem can be the use of tracing at an arbitrary angle, which helps minimize the level of crosstalk. To connect to a pad, we will also create a stepped transition. After connecting in a similar way, we create an opening in the solder mask, and we smooth the transition using the teardrops tool. 